Well, hello everybody. Welcome to TechSoup. This is the new member orientation and questions and answer. My name is Aretha Sams. I'm the webinar producer here. So glad that you are here. On the next slide, I'm going to show you how you can engage. I know we've already met a few friends that have been to our webinars, but if this is your first time. We would love for you to put your questions in the Q&A. Um, we have some great team members in the background that can answer your questions. And if you need the closed caption, go ahead and look at the bottom of your Zoom screen and you'll see the CC button. You can turn on the closed caption. This is being recorded. So you're gonna get the recording and you're gonna get the slides with the hyperlinks on all the slides. So sometimes you see something we're talking about and you know you can't click on the link. It's going to be on the slide. So when you get those, I'm going to go ahead and turn this over to Nick. He's got a lot to share today and have a great webinar, everybody. Thanks, team. Hi, everybody. Um, thanks, Aretha, for getting us going. Um, and to all my colleagues who are joining us today, my name is Nick Finn. I'm the head of global growth marketing at TechSoup. Um, and uh, I have a malfunctioning camera today. So all you get from me is a screenshot and then the live presentation online. Apologies for that. Um, you've already met the wonderful Aretha Simons. You'll also get to meet uh, Kevin Mulhall and Kelly Garrett on today's presentation. Um, and without any further ado, let's get rolling on Welcome to TechSoup. Um, I want to start with some key terms that really matter um, as we talk about TechSoup and the nonprofits that use us. Um, the first is you'll hear the term qualified. Um, and qualified means that uh, TechSoup is, has determined that your organization is a 501c3 nonprofit and therefore is able to use the product catalog and the services that TechSoup offers. Um, and that's an important term because qualified means you can work with us, um, but you cannot work with us until we have determined that you are qualified to do that. Um, you'll also hear the term eligibility. Um, eligibility is a little bit different than qualification. Qualification means you can work with TechSoup, but on some of the offers that we have, there are tighter restrictions around which types of nonprofits are eligible for those offers. Often, that is related to the budget of the organization, and in some cases, it's related to the mission or the scope of work. Um, so eligibility is another important uh, term to keep in mind, um, and I think uh, Kelly Garrett will touch on that a little bit later as we look at some of the back end of the TechSoup website and how you can use it. Um, civil society is another term that you will hear TechSoup talk about. Um, really, what that means is it's the change makers who are working outside the government and outside of corporations and businesses. Um, so it's all the other organizations out there trying to do good in the world, um, and uh, we call that civil society. Digital transformation is the process of embracing technology to improve your nonprofit's functions and its delivery of programs, whatever those programs are. Um, we believe at TechSoup from our perspective that technology can be a very powerful tool for nonprofits um, and uh, digital transformation is the process of nonprofits really leaning into that. And then finally, digital resilience is the notion that your nonprofit's technology can quickly respond, adapt, and continue to function and serve during some kind of external disruption or crisis. And, and what that actually means is that your nonprofit itself is resilient as well. Um, and so, of course, for all of us around the world, the COVID pandemic a couple of years ago is a great example of where you need to have systems in place to allow your nonprofit to be resilient. Um, and the stock example I give of that is some nonprofits at the start of COVID were still relying on paper and pencil to manage their books. Um, as soon as remote work became a requirement, those paper and pencil accounting systems became very not resilient because nobody could use them. Um, and so pivoting into a... Uh, online uh, platform that helps you track your nonprofit's finances is an example of you know how you would increase your digital resilience. 
Right. With that, let's get rolling and ask a first big question. What is TechSoup? We are a 501c3 nonprofit organization. And I start with that because it means we are like you. This webinar is intended for folks who are working at 501c3 nonprofit organizations. And we are one ourselves, which means we understand a lot about how nonprofit culture is different than just private sector business and corporations. We support other nonprofits who are working with technology to help build a more equitable planet. And I call out the equitable planet element at the end here because I want you to know that TechSoup not only has a perspective on technology, but we also have a very humanist approach, meaning that we really care about the planet and the people who live on it. And we want technology to serve people and to make the world more equitable. To do that, we host a catalog of affordable tech products for major brands like Microsoft, Dell, Intuit, Adobe, and many more. We'll talk about some of them. Um, this catalog is hosted at TechSoup.org in the United States. Um, and what we try to do is negotiate some of the best pricing that nonprofits can get on these products. Um, because we know from experience that one of the big blockers on technology is simply the upfront cost. And so if we can help nonprofits save some money on the front end, that's pretty helpful. But in addition to acquiring technology, we also know that nonprofits need additional help implementing technology, managing it for the long term, troubleshooting it when issues arise. And so over time, we have started to develop a number of services to help nonprofits manage their technology stacks. We also create educational resources to help nonprofit staff and leaders build their technology skills and expertise. That's a pretty standard part of almost what any nonprofit does when you work with the public. Um, and uh, we do it and finally, like you, we also have our own grant-based programming that we implement um, to help the broader civil society use of technology. So one thing you'll notice when you take all these things together is TechSoup has a pretty broad scope and mission. Um, and uh, we do operate outside the United States and across the entire world, in fact. Um, but today's webinar is really intended for our U.S. audience. So if you're calling in from outside the United States, some of what you're going to hear may not necessarily apply to your local TechSoup chapter. Um, but for U.S. folks, this is all for you. So I'm going to start by talking about the TechSoup product catalog, which you can get to on the homepage at TechSoup.org by clicking on this orange browse catalog button. You can also see in the navigation at the top that there is a product catalog item in the navigation right here. And in fact, right now, what I'm gonna do is switch over to a live view of the website, which you can now see, and talk a little bit about what it is that the TechSoup website does and how you use it. The first place I want to go is this top right-hand corner where you see both the login and the join buttons. As I said, to use the TechSoup website, you must be a qualified nonprofit. You must have joined TechSoup with a member account. You must have added your nonprofit to become a TechSoup member. And if you have not yet done that, this join button right here is the very first place that you need to go. You need to join TechSoup and add your user information and then add your nonprofit as well. And when you add your nonprofit, you will need to have your uh, tax ID number or your EIN number. 
um, that's one of the most important data points that we rely on to make sure that your organization is qualified to use the products and services on TechSoup.org. If you're already qualified with TechSoup and you've gone through that membership process, you can just go ahead and log into the site anytime using that login button. Right, but I promised you I was going to talk about the products and services. So let's get into exactly what that is. Um, like I said, you can reach the product catalog here. You can also reach it here with the orange button. You can also click through from some of these logos that we have here to specific elements on the page. And I'm going to start by actually going to the Microsoft offers because Microsoft is one of the offers and sets of products that TechSoup um, that has been one of our most popular for the decades that TechSoup has been working. Um, and as you can see, we've got a number of different Microsoft offers here on the site. I want to draw your attention first um, to something that's very new, which is we now have Microsoft Copilot um, in the catalog um, available to nonprofits. As far as I understand at the moment, there is not a nonprofit discount on Microsoft Copilot. However, you can still access it at the regular price through the TechSoup uh, account. So if you have one already and you're thinking about Copilot, you could get Copilot through TechSoup and uh, manage your subscription through TechSoup as well. Probably the most popular product available for Microsoft users is the Office 365 Enterprise or Microsoft 365 Nonprofit Cloud Subscriptions. Um, these are basically the Microsoft Office you have grown up with. Um, maybe you love it, maybe you don't, but everybody uses it for work. Um, and you can get your licenses for Microsoft 365 through TechSoup. And TechSoup does have services that exist in conjunction with those licenses to help you choose the right one, to help you implement them properly, um, and to manage them over time. Um, and uh, these are the kinds of services I was saying on the front end that we've really come to understand are really important to nonprofits um, as you use these new technologies, especially with the rate at which things change. If you're interested in learning more about those Microsoft services, you can go up here to the services dropdown and Office 365 is right there. You will see, of course, there are other items in that services dropdown. If you scroll down through Microsoft offers, you will also see that there are what we would call some of the older standalone products that folks rely on. Um, we still have donated versions of Office for Mac and for PCs. Um, and then we also have desktop operating systems and then other developer tools and server solutions from Microsoft. Um, it's a pretty good set of offers. Um, and so if your nonprofit is a Microsoft user, um, TechSoup can definitely be your ally in working with those platforms and with those products. All right, going back to the main page, another partner that we spend a lot of bandwidth um, working with and that nonprofits rely on a lot is Adobe. So let's go to Adobe really quickly and just take a look at what's there. Um, if you work in nonprofit communications or design, like web design, um, then it's most likely you've come across Adobe already because they are, you know, one of the preeminent design packages out there. And Adobe Creative Cloud, I don't think there's anything uh, more robust or more well-known around the world in terms of a platform to create digital assets. Um, but using Adobe Creative Cloud requires a little bit of training and know-how. And so that's usually what you have a designer for or a web designer who's maybe doing the work. Um, but a creative cloud contains things like video editing. You can, you know, you've got standard print and website development um, in terms of graphic development, Adobe Illustrator, Adobe InDesign, Adobe Photoshop. All of those products that you've heard about before are wrapped into creative cloud. 
a newer offer from Adobe that's extremely popular is Adobe Express Premium. Adobe Express is sort of an all-in-one package that's great for creating quick and easy like social media images and videos and animations. Um, and uh, it's designed for folks who maybe don't have the training to use Creative Cloud, who want sort of an easier, faster solution. Adobe Express is available these days through TechSoup at a $0 admin fee. Um, and uh, that's been pretty popular for a good year and a half, maybe two years even. Um, and the third item that folks really do come to TechSoup for a lot is the Adobe Acrobat Pro DC subscription. Um, Acrobat Pro DC uh, is the software that manages PDFs, portable document formats. That's something Adobe actually invented. Every nonprofit out there uses PDFs. And so if you need help managing those PDFs, Acrobat Pro DC is the place to go. Right, going back to our homepage, I'm gonna click also on Intuit because Intuit QuickBooks is one of the most popular offers at TechSoup. And as you recall, I already called out the example of how the pandemic really messed up folks who were using an old pencil and paper system for any accounting. Um, but uh, QuickBooks is one of the most popular offers at TechSoup um, and QuickBooks Online Plus one year subscription for five users, I think is the most popular item at TechSoup these days. Um, and so if you are thinking about an online accounting system to help your nonprofit um, and you're not already using QuickBooks, I strongly recommend taking a look at QuickBooks. Um, you know, uh, hundreds of thousands of nonprofits cannot be wrong out there using it on a daily basis. Right. As you can see, there are several other logos here. Um, and in fact, there are a number of other uh, companies that TechSoup works with. I'm gonna quickly click through them here. We've already talked about the Microsoft elements. We've talked about the Adobe elements. We've talked about the QuickBook elements. And there's a number of other companies that we work with. This is not a comprehensive list, but I share it with you because I want you to know that there are a number of other tech products out there um, that can be helpful to your nonprofit that may be different than the three I've already shared. You know, things that jump out to me in my daily use. I'm a huge Slack user, so nice to see them. Um, and uh, of course, we've all come to use Zoom quite a bit over time. Um, Grant Station is a huge offer at TechSoup as well. We have a promotion on Grant Station every February and every September that really helps um, nonprofits who are looking for new ways to find grant funding. Um, you know, you've got Bitdefender, which is a great security product. Norton is the same. Um, AWS has been a new addition to the catalog over the past several years that a lot of folks now use to deal with their web hosting. Um, and many, many beyond this. And so that catalog is really worth your time spending going through and taking a look at what might be of help to your nonprofit. I also want to call out the fact that it's not just software products that TechSoup works with. We have quite a good catalog of hardware items. Um, and the first thing I want to call out is like hardware, unfortunately, on our website is a little harder to find. So I'm gonna specifically show you how to do that. You have to go to the product catalog first and then there's a tab for hardware. Let me go now to the live site and we'll do that together. So if I click on the product catalog here, you know, it's gonna spin for a second. It's gonna take us to the front page of the catalog. And then I can go right here to the hardware section and we can take a look at what is there today. Um, we have mobile devices, including unlocked iPhones. Um, we do have some Apple Watches in stock at the moment for folks who are looking for those. Um, lots of desktops and laptops available through TechSoup. Monitors as well, networking equipment, security cameras, sensors, computer accessories, 
even printers, smaller pieces of office equipment, all those bits and bobs of hardware, you can get that stuff through TechSoup. One thing in particular that I would like to call out is that TechSoup has a really great refurbished program. Um, and that refurbished program is something that we were a leader on many, many years ago, long before big business figured out that refurbished hardware um, was an area that they should get into. From TechSoup's perspective, sort of looping back to what I said on the front end about really wanting to work for a more equitable planet, having like a big goal, we knew years ago that simply throwing away um, unused computer equipment was just very not green and not a good idea, um, bad for the environment, a waste of resources. And so we began a line of business around providing access to refurbished computers, um, which may not be the brand new model that's available today, maybe it's a couple of years old, still perfectly capable of handling the workload of the internet and other programs that you may work with. And of course, by buying refurbished, you can save some money as well. Um, and as I said, it's definitely a greener practice than simply constantly throwing out what we perceive as outdated technology. Some of that stuff is perfectly usable today. Right, so... We've talked about hardware, new and refurbished. We do have Dell, Lenovo, and HP specifically in our hardware catalog. And mobile devices, as I've already given you the overview of. Now let's talk about TechSoup services. Like I said, we've come to understand over time that nonprofits need more help than just access to a catalog of technology products, hardware, and software. Even if you're saving money in our catalog, you probably need more help than just that. So over time, TechSoup has started to develop a line of services. Um, and so let's talk a little bit about what those services are. And I will say that they are changing and evolving rapidly. Um, and so at the moment, if you look at our drop down menu, and again, I'm going to go to the live site to show that. Here we go. You've got a number of items right here, and I just want to touch on what some of these are quickly. There's a digital assessment tool, which is really just a question, a guided questionnaire uh, that you can go through to help understand how different functional areas of your nonprofit may be doing well or may need some help. Uh, in terms of how they are using technology. Um, Help Desk is one of our most popular services offers. It is a low level offer, meaning that it's designed to help you with like one item. Perhaps you've got some crazy printer or fax machine that's always giving you trouble, or there's one other specific thing in your tech staff that you just really need help with all the time. Um, help Desk is a one-off or subscription-based service that you can use um, to help manage that. Um, Office 365, I also I mentioned earlier in passing, but uh, these are the services that can help you with Microsoft uh, 365 products, um, implementation, troubleshooting, etc. Managed IT is a service where you work with TechSoup to establish a bigger, broader management of your entire nonprofit's technology stack. So uh, if Help Desk sounds like it might be too small for what you need, Managed IT is the other end of that spectrum. It gives you a broad range of uh, tech to cover. Um, let's talk about website services for a second. Um, you know, one of the amazing things about the World Wide Web and the Internet has been that it allows every nonprofit to put up your own personalized calling card on the web, right? Your website now is the dominant communication mode for any nonprofit trying to talk to the public. I have yet to meet a nonprofit who doesn't think that their website needs major help, and that includes TechSoup. Because all the time, there are new functions and new things we want to do with the website. And everybody's always scrambling to figure out what should we do 
How can we afford it? What are the important functions of our website? What different technologies should our website be using? So over time, TechSoup has developed a series of website services. Um, and uh, these are not free, to be very clear on that on the front end here. Um, these are all things that you have to pay for. But uh, we do know nonprofits and the contractors we work with are great at what they do. Um, and so if you think your nonprofit needs help with its website um, and there's some budget that you're ready to work with, I encourage you to take a look at the website services um, as a starting place. Similar to website services, there's also digital marketing services. There are some nonprofits out there who have to be much more aggressive in terms of finding uh, folks to work with. Maybe they're actually doing email marketing. Maybe they're running some ads. Those kinds of outbound outreach marketing technologies are not always the easiest to understand if you don't have a background working with those. And so working with TechSoup, you can work with our digital marketing services. Um, TechSoup Courses is undergoing evolution at the moment, but that really is the front end of the educational resources that we provide to nonprofits to learn more about technology and different ways they can use it, how to troubleshoot it best. Um, Boost um, is also undergoing evolution right now, but Boost is a level of membership at TechSoup. Um, by subscribing to Boost, which is a paid membership, um, it opens up some additional offers in the catalog that you wouldn't necessarily have access to without the Boost membership. Um, and so, for instance, one of them right now is uh, access to uh, Walmart's Business Plus membership, which you can get through TechSoup Boost. And then through that Business Plus membership at Walmart, you can save some money on items that your nonprofit might need. Um, and so that's worth checking out. There's a lot of other stuff in Boost that's available. Um, so if you think of your nonprofit as being, you know, fairly forward thinking in its use of technology um, and wanting some help making decisions about which ones to get, Boost is a great place to go. Uh, finally, uh, I want to call out Consultant Connection here. Um, which is a new and evolving part of TechSoup as well. Well, it's been around for a few years, actually, I should say, but it's definitely un undergoing a, a pretty substantial um, evolution right now. Um, this is a way to connect consultants who work for nonprofits, who work with nonprofits, um, with uh, nonprofits who need their help. Um, and so if you are a consultant who provides services to nonprofits or you're a nonprofit, looking for a consultant to work with, Consultant Connection is a great place that you can go and look at that. So I'm gonna jump back to our presentation here. We've looked at the different elements in TechSoup services, talked about help desk, managed IT. We talked about website services, nonprofit marketing services. Oh, I do want to call out that we have now a domain registration service at TechSoup. So if your nonprofit does not yet have its website established or does not have its domain, we can help you with that. And uh, I've already mentioned the Office 365 email and data migration and then the TechSoup services wrap up. Here is TechSoup Boost, which we spoke about already. This is the $99 offer. Um, and a place where you can uh, take a look at additional offers available through the catalog. I also want to talk about Quad, which is another level of TechSoup membership that is different than Boost. Um, Quad is a more expensive membership that currently is $200 annually per, per organization. Um, and I think of Quad very much as probably the most robust level of engagement you can have with TechSoup. It is the place, it is the space where you will get the most in-depth exploration of expert content um, and dialogue with other nonprofits and TechSoup staff themselves talking about technology products. Um, things that are coming to market that are exciting for nonprofits, ways to manage common pain points with technology. Um, 
and uh, definitely a future state for TechSoup that we are building aggressively. And so if you think of yourself and your nonprofit as very forward thinking and you really want to be in the middle of things, Quad is an excellent space for you to be thinking about and to become a TechSoup Quad member would be very helpful. Okay, so having burned through these different elements of TechSoup and knowing, of course, that um, we have limited time, I now want to introduce a couple of my colleagues here um, to talk a little bit more about passive engagement with TechSoup. So one of the things that's really true of TechSoup is uh, we're not just a website and some impersonal in service that you can just contact uh, and, and hear only back through email. We are, of course, live human beings, um, and we really are here to help. Um, and the first uh, set of folks that you may encounter working with TechSoup is the account management group, client services. Um, and so I'm introducing Kelly Garrett to share with you a little bit more about client services. And to be super clear, client services is how you manage your TechSoup account, right? So it's not the folks who are going to help you fix that printer or troubleshoot Microsoft 365 or download the latest version of Adobe, right? That's a different stack, and we'll get to them a minute when we talk to Kevin Mulhall. But Kelly Garrett, take it away. Thank you so much, Nick. Um, hi, everybody. I've been chatting with some of you in the webinar chat. Um, great to have you here and hope you've been getting all your questions. Um, a reminder that the Q&A option is in there. It's a little easier to track along with your answers to your questions, um, but feel free to keep going in the chat. Kevin and I are answering stuff in there. Awesome. Okay. So first things first is I do love to point out to members where you can find a lot of information. Um, as we've noted, we are a nonprofit ourselves. Sometimes our resources are limited and we can have long wait times for our live chat support. Um, we do strive to get to you guys as fast as we can, but you know, things happen, busy weeks, especially around fiscal year and things like that. So um, we always encourage our members to try and check out the website first. Um, we've been really trying to make improvements lately for more self-service options, putting more information out there for y'all. Um, so you're able to make the decisions to best support your organization. Um, on the product page, um, or the offer page, uh, we do have um, three tabs of information um, that you'll see listed above that description title. Um, highly recommend clicking all three tabs and reading all of the information, um, especially that like subscription details, that middle tab, that usually has a great breakdown of if it's an access to discounted rate product, it's going to tell you what that discounted rate is. If there's any restrictions on, you know, if you have an existing subscription, you know, this can't be applied to it. You have to start a new one, which is the case for QuickBooks Online products. Um, they cannot be applied to an existing QuickBooks Online um, account, but you can start a new one on the donated um, nonprofit billing and transfer your information over by a copy file or a copy company file feature. All this stuff's detailed on this product page. We also have a TechSoup support um, uh, page as well that goes into different things where we do have like uh, getting started, um, how to contact customer service. We have an Intuit for nonprofit section. Um, so just something to keep in mind, which I'll highlight how to get there in a minute. But Besides the three uh, tabs that you'll see on these product pages, underneath the name of the product, you will see the admin fee in red. You will also see what donor partner this comes from. Uh, we also refer to donor partners as corporate partners or providers. Um, Intuit would be the company that owns and supports QuickBooks Online, and they've given us uh, registration links to send to y'all when you um, check out with it. Um, underneath the admin fee, you will see the quantity, um, and then you will also see the add to cart um, button. You must be logged in to see that add to cart button. Um, if you don't see that, you'll see the login, and it will log you in, and then you can add it to your cart and check out. Um, underneath that button, you'll also see it says for test test. Um, that's my test account for organizations. So if you're um, maybe a consultant who uh, manages or supports multiple organizations, you can use one login to um, support 
represent all the organizations you've um, had joined with TechSoup, and it will tell you which organization you're checking out for. And that is important to keep in mind. Um, all of this information and being sure that you requesting the right product for the right organization, because we do usually have a very strict no refunds um, and no exchanges policy. Um, it's something in our partners um, conditions, and it is also something that TechSoup um, has to be a little strict on. You know, we're only given a certain amount of licenses for certain products over the course of the fiscal year. And once we give those products out, a lot of times we cannot get them back. And that means that nobody gets to use it. So just throwing out there, make sure you're reading everything and checking everything. And if there's any questions or doubts you got, um, you want to contact our customer service team. And I'll go into how to do that in a minute. Next slide, please. Perfect. So that's that subscription tab that I was talking about. You know, it calls out the subscription limits, start date, continuing the service after a year. Um, we do have renewal products. Um, so like, for example, QuickBooks Online, you do need to renew through TechSoup every year. Other things like, uh, for example, Zoom, which is an access to a discounted rate of 50% off. Um, you renew your eligibility every year with TechSoup. We give you a coupon code so then you can then go to the Zoom website and renew at the discounted rate. So there is some nuances to that, and it's usually outlined underneath this middle tab. Um, the far right tab rules eligibility and restrictions. That's usually going to explain to you if you're getting a notice saying you're not eligible for something, that's will break down certain restrictions or requirements. You know, some, as Nick said earlier, some uh, partners do have um, budget limitations. Some have budget minimums. Amazon um, AWS is one of those. Depending on what your budget is, you'll have access to different tiers um, of their products. So it's something important to always make sure that your organization details are up to date. Your right budget's listed. Um, you can always check what your organization type looks like all in your account. So something to keep in mind that there's a lot of nuances to you've been qualified, that doesn't mean you get to access to everything. And it's, um you know, no organization type gets access to everything. Each partner's got its kind of own philanthropic goal and focus. And it's never a comment on what you're doing. It's a comment on what they're happy to be focused on and what their goals are for their uh, company. Next slide, please. Perfect. So TechSoup support, um, I mentioned that. And I have put at uh, beginning of this presentation, um, I did put some links to some of the TechSoup support articles, such as um, how to contact test, uh, customer service, um, which offers are my organization eligible for. So if you scroll up to the beginning where everyone was saying, hey, and good morning, you'll see those uh, linked there. And again, the transcript will go out to you all, and I'm going to show you how to find these articles yourself anyways, so you will have access to it. Um, so on the uh, on the website, and it's the uh, techsoup.org, you will see it next to where you log in, or if you are logged in, it's a little circle icon, um, you'll see a help, and you'll want to click that help button. Next slide, please. Perfect. Um, so in the uh, TechSoup support, you will have a search feature. We also have different headers um, that you'll be able to click through. Uh, we do have a micro, we are expanding more into uh, having articles specific to different programs. Right now we have Microsoft and Intuit um, articles, and we are adding to those um, all the time. So highly recommend always coming here and taking a look. If you know the offer page didn't show you what you were looking for, it might be in here. If you have questions about your eligibility, this is a great place to go. If you haven't registered yet, the getting getting started section is a really great place to get um to get started. <laughs> so perfect. So um highly recommend again going and checking that out when you get a chance. Um and you might be able to uh resolve your own issue or answer your own question, and not have to wait for us on the chat. Next slide, please. Perfect. So as Nick mentioned, you know, there are a lot of TechSoup support services and resources that we have. We've tried to make it really clear um, in our TechSoup support articles, you know, here's what's available, um, you know, here's quad, things along those lines. So again, poking around through this article first, I, I would definitely do. It's a good starting point for the TechSoup support articles because it is going to outline all the things that are available to, to you all. Since customer service pretty much is account management, we can answer basic, you know, download installation things. If your coupon code's expired, we can help you with that. But, but more in-depth support um, is something that you're going to probably want to go to one of our services or go to the partner that provided the product or um, offer that you're accessing. Next slide, please. 
So as I was just saying, um, customer service can help you with, say, eligibility questions, navigating our resources, account management. We can give basic um, general product support. Um, but we have so many partners, which is fabulous, that we can't become experts on all of them. And luckily, each partner has their own support team that are experts on their products. And they should be able to walk you through different things like download and installation issues, with the product, um, you know, if you're having a functionality issue, things along those lines. A lot of times TechSoup doesn't have access to our partner systems to like help you make, say, like a Microsoft for nonprofits account update. We Microsoft doesn't give us access to do that. So you will have to go to Microsoft for that kind of support. Um, again, highlighted the services um, page here and you will get the slide deck. So that's a great place to go if you are looking for IT support. Um, we do have some product specific support such as office installation. Um, that's a bit of a doozy sometimes. Um, so we do have a nicely priced um, service for support with that. Um, we also have some general ones. It's like a one-time fix, et cetera, et cetera. So again, recommend going and checking those out if you run into any issues. Thank you. Perfect. So um, contacting us, uh, we did at the beginning of the year close our uh, call center. Um, we did find that the live chat was something we could support um, most efficiently. Uh, we were able to kind of cut down wait times. We were having really long wait times for responses across the board. So at this point in time, we only have the live chat available. It is open typically from 7 a.m. to 3.30 p.m. Monday through Thursday and from 7 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. Pacific. Um, I did put in earlier how to contact TechSoup in the chat. Um, I will repost that um, right now because uh, we do like to keep our hours or any closures that are coming up. Um, for example, we were closed on Juneteenth. Um, so that was that's was listed on our contact customer service um, page. So if you are ever like, why isn't it popping up? You can check there. Occasionally, we do have some closures um, related to all staff things that we need to do, but we do try to be available as much as we can for our members. And um, it is something to keep in mind. Uh, the hours, it's not 24 hours. It's not Saturday and Sunday. It's weekdays. Perfect. Next slide, please. So the support article that I provided does um, cover and have these screenshots. You can always go there to check. Um, we do hear from members occasionally that they don't hear, see the help button or they do not see the live chat button within the help bubble. Um, most of the folks that I have worked with have found that it's usually related to a firewall, um, a browser version, a pop-up blocker, a security filter, something along the lines with your browser is usually the issue. That and also um, mobile devices. Mobile devices don't seem to like our website that much. Um, so it's something to keep in mind that I do recommend using a computer to access the live chat. Um, you will be speaking to a real person, someone on my team. Uh, we do not use AI or chatbot to work with you. You will see some automated messaging at the beginning, greeting you, telling you what information we're looking for um, to help make it a smooth transition into support. Um, so you definitely want to read those messages, but you will be speaking to somebody um, and not an AI or a chatbot. Perfect. Next slide, please. So this is um, something you can ref reference later. Again, I'm just kind of going over what I was just saying about unable to connect to live chat. You know, if you are unable to see the help bubble, the help button is always there. So if you're not seeing it, something's going on with your browser. Um, and then if you do see if there's no live chat, that's when I would just start checking your browser settings, things along those lines. Um, and this article that is linked in this uh, slide does go over all of this and it's a great place to go for all the troubleshooting that we have found to work for our members that have reported issues. Next slide, please. Perfect. And so that is it for my presentation. Um, I am so happy you all are here and your members with us now or about to be members. Um, please let us know if there's anything we can do for you. And again, um, live chat is typically open from during those hours, and we are right now actively taking chat. So um, have a great day, everyone, and welcome to TechSoup. All right, thank you so much, Kelly. Um, and next, I bring forward my colleague, Kevin Mulhall. Um, Kevin works with the customer success team at TechSoup. These are the folks that can actually help you resolve issues with the actual technology products that you've acquired through TechSoup. And so with that, Kevin, take it away.
Thanks, Nick. Um, I'm going to be very quick. Um, I only have uh, one slide here. So um, I wanted to first just kind of uh, go over the bullets that you see here um, and then uh, discuss very briefly how we can be uh, directly um, accessed. So the customer success team, um, our group um, is a team of five. Uh, we have a combined 20 years of experience helping nonprofits. Uh, while my current role is, is as an account executive, my background um, is as a technical CSM, um, or more commonly known in the commercial world as a solutions architect. Um, this is an opportunity, as Nick mentioned, to learn more about the products and services uh, that are available through TechSoup. Um, so where Kelly's team is, again, there to provide that kind of frontline type of support, um, we're there to help bridge the gap because understanding that our vendors um, are very busy, um, the there is a partial onus on us to be able to understand at a deeper level, not all, but many of our product offers. And to that end, we uh, can serve as a positive resource for being able to address um, issues before say needing escalation um, and possibly advise um, in some additional capacities around a particular technology. To that point, um, myself uh, and my colleague, Tony Pips, um, are also certified in several of the technologies, including Microsoft, which was mentioned on uh, both of our cases, multiple times certified, uh, AWS and Google Cloud Platform. This offers, again, our customers the unique ability to gain insights um, into, on top of the products themselves, uh, areas around the latest practices and principles within the nonprofit space. Our role is, is multifold. Um, the first and obvious one is to, is to have a strong knowledge of what technologies you're acquiring through us, but also to understand the technology landscape. Um, being able to acquire products um, is sometimes where the thought begins and ends. Um, we are big proponents of something called the technology life cycle. Uh, that's something that engaging with us, uh, we would have the ability to uh, help educate and even uh, prepare for. Uh, to that end, some of the specific items that we also work on uh, with greater frequency um, include things like discussing requests for proposals, reviewing scopes of work, uh, that's a big one, um, as well as areas around general fundraising, using certain technologies uh, to enhance your ability to uh, gain access uh, to additional financial resources, uh, as well as technology audits, which is probably one of the largest pieces. Um, for some context, when you see this, some of these items kind of fit into that gray area where they're general advisory services, but we would not want them confused with, as Nick mentioned earlier, any of our fully managed services. We do not provide end-to-end -end, um, red carpet support around areas. We consider ourselves kind of not gatekeepers, but almost um, uh, ferry conductors in that we help navigate organizations from one area to the other um, and help bridging that gap because that's a, it's a very, um, it's a, a very sometimes scary place to be um, is, is in transitional phases between whether a strategic or a technological um, adoption, like being within that, um, that phase or cycle. Uh, so to that end, we uh, specifically are accessed in a couple of ways. Uh, the first is if you are specifically looking for, you are in the process of actively looking to uh, purchase a product. Um, being able to help facilitate and answer those questions is obviously very important. And we're there in that regards. For the general supports themselves, Nick had mentioned um, a newer-ish, I guess that I could say, um, community membership community that we launched called Quad. Uh, Quad is um, 
an area in which myself and my colleague Tony, who I mentioned, um, work actively uh, with members through various communities of practice and purpose. And we are there every day um, to be able to kind of uh, answer and address even some of the basic one-off type items. For more advanced engagements, um, we currently um, are helping uh, or, or capacitating to um, engage with members there uh, once a month, as well as um, helping uh, to deliver uh, any um, particular resources uh, on a once a month basis as well. So that's what we do. And those are the areas in which we can be engaged with. So with that, I'm gonna hand it back to you, Nick. Great, thank you so much, Kevin, and thank you, Kelly. Um, well, folks, we, we've reached the 50 minute mark um, and uh, try not to go the full hour always. Um, and so I want to say thank you to each of you for sake, taking some time today to, to listen in on our Welcome to TechSoup webinar. Uh, I also want to thank you for making the decision to work in the nonprofit industry in the first place. Um, it, to me, that probably means that you have a, a social conscience at work in your employment. You're thinking about how to make your community more resilient, how to make it a better place. Maybe there's a specific cause that you are really passionate about that's led you to the nonprofit industry. But whatever that path, uh, I want to just give appreciation for your decision to do that. It's not always the easiest path. Um, and uh, I hope that TechSoup can be helpful in helping your nonprofit navigate the technology needs it might have. Um, uh, you will receive an email at the conclusion of this webinar with the presentation and live links in it. Um, and uh, you know, if uh, if you've been engaging with Kevin or Kelly in chat during the process today, I, I hope you found their answers helpful. Um, with that, uh, I'm going to bring this webinar to conclusion. Thank you very much for your time today, um, and have a great rest of your Wednesday. <laughs>